Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, leçon A. And we'll start this unit with vocabulary and the topic is au café, so quite useful. Un serveur, une table, une terrasse de café, un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, so one more time. Un serveur, une table, une terrasse de café, un crème, remember, un accent grave, eh, eh, un crème, un noir, un expresso. Ok, remember, we've got this X here. Ex expresso. Ok. Un cappuccino, un chocolat chaud, un café glacé, un thé, un thé vert, un thé blanc, All right. so, un cappuccino, not really difficult to produce, un chocolat chaud, remember CH, ch ch chaud, chocolat, and then final T not pronounced, chaud, final D not pronounced, un café glacé, un thé, Remember, H is not pronounced. Un thé vert, final T not pronounced. Un thé vert. Un thé blanc, final C not pronounced. Un thé blanc. Ok? Un thé nature. Une tisane. Une camomille. Un thé au lait. Un thé au citron. Un thé glacé, un thé nature, une tisane, une camomille. So remember when we get this I and then double L, it goes like Y, Y. Mille, mille, camomille, une camomille, un thé au lait, final thé not pronounced, un thé au citron, un thé glacé. Un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. All right. Un jus d'orange, un jus de pomme. In most of the cases, French people will pronounce it like un jus de pomme. D, d, jus de pomme. All right. And then same thing here, un jus de tomate. Okay, so you don't insist on the d. Jus de, jus de tomate. <laughs> I know it's quite difficult to produce, but still try. So, un jus d'orange, here it's not difficult. Un jus de pomme, un jus de tomate. Okay? That's it for this short but useful lesson. If you want more videos, it's here, youtube.com slash imagier. And then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon B. And in this lesson, so previously we just saw in the Leçon A, uh, at the café, au café, and then, well, logically, we'll, saw for this, we'll see for this uh, second lesson, au restaurant. Okay, so let's start now. Une table, un verre, une assiette. Une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Une table, un verre, une assiette, une assiette plate, une assiette creuse. Une assiette à dessert, une serviette, une fourchette, un couteau. Une cuillère. So let's repeat them. Une assiette à dessert. Une serviette. Une fourchette. Un couteau. Une cuillère. Une cuillère à soupe. Un garçon. Un menu. Une carte des vins. À la carte. Une cuillère à soupe, 
un garçon. Remember when we get this CD beneath the C, it will give you the pronunciation S of C. So instead of K, as it should be with O. Okay? So, un garçon, un menu, une carte des vins à la carte. Une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. Une addition, un reçu, un pourboire. And that's it for le restaurant. If you want more lessons and more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier is here. And then the website imagier.net can find, find more material and it's waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 8, Leçon C. And in this lesson, we'll work on le poisson. So it will be a vocabulary lesson. Okay, so let's start now. Le ton. La dorade. La morue, le saumon, le bar. Let's repeat them. Le ton. Remember, H here is not pronounced. Le ton. La dorade. La morue. Final E uh, not pronounced. Le saumon. O-N, remember, nasal in your nose. Saumon. Le bar. Le merlan, la raie, la sardine, l'aigle fin, la liman de sol. Ok, so, le merlan, la raie, final E, not pronounced. La sardine, you don't insist on the final E, it only gives you the N, N pronunciation. Sardine. L'aigle fin, la limande sol. La sol, l'espadon, la truite, le macro, la lotte, la sol, same thing, don't insist on the final E, ok, it only gives you the L sound, sol, l'espadon, O N in your nose, nasal, on, espadon, la truite, same thing here, final E not pronounced, t, la truite, le macro, so technically this K, just pronounce it K, mac, macro, macro, all right, and then E, A, U, remember when you combine these three vowels, you get the sound O, macro, okay, And then, la lotte, final E, uh, not pronounced, lotte, t, t, lotte, okay, la lotte, all right, so that's it, you've got many words now if you want to talk about fish, les poissons, if you want more videos then, youtube.com slash imagier, and then imagier.net, the website if you want more material, have a great day, bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent, and this is Unité 8, Leçon D. And in this lesson, we'll still work on vocabulary as we did previously in the previous lessons. And we'll cover in this lesson les céréales. L'avoine, le blé, le maïs, le millet. So let's repeat them. L'avoine, remember, don't insist on the final E. L'avoine, le blé, here, accent aigu, et le maïs, so here you get this tréma, so maïs, maïs, and then you pronounce the final S, maïs. Le millet, here, I, and then double L, so I, I, millet, E, T at the end, open, millet. L'orge. Le quinoa, le son. Let's repeat. L'orge, le quinoa, 
le son. And that's it. Really short, but quite useful. More videos, youtube.com slash imagier, and then more material here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon E. And in this lesson we'll discover together l'imparfait. So we saw previously le passé composé, so this past tense uh, that we use quite often. And this is the second one, so l'imparfait. And in this video we'll see together the first part, l'utilisation, so when do we use l'imparfait. Okay, and then the second part will be la formation. So how do we build, how do, do we construct this uh, imparfait form? Okay, so, but then let's focus now on l'utilisation. So when do we use l'imparfait? And then the first situation when we will use l'imparfait will be if you want to describe something in the past. Une description dans le passé. Okay, so if you want to describe something in the past, like in this example here, la pièce, the room, était, so that's the verb here, the verb is to be, okay, and it's the, uh, the imparfait form, était, grande, big, et sombre, dark, okay, so in that case you want to describe the room, then you should use l'imparfait. Second situation, une habitude dans le passé, so a, a habit, something that you, you are used to do in the past, okay? And the example is, je partais, partir is to leave, okay? And it's the imparfait form here, le matin, the morning, à 8 heures. Okay, so in that case, you want to say that it's an habit, something that you do in the past, then you should use l'imparfait, okay? Other situation, when you will need to use l'imparfait, une répétition dans le passé. Okay, so répétition, we understand, something that repeats itself dans le passé. The example here, nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant. Okay, so aller is to go tous les soirs, okay, so every evening au restaurant. All right, so something that you do and that repeats itself, itself in the past. And then, if you want to say something that lasts, durées to last, in the past, dans le passé, then, in that case, this uh, sentence is quite interesting because I've been, I wanted to, to make the difference between the use of the, the, the imparfait here, okay, and then here, here you've got the passé composé form, all right? So, je regardais la télé, sur la télévision, all right, so in that case, you tend to use, of course, l'imparfait because it lasts <laughs> a while uh, when you watch TV. So if it's a movie or something like that. Quand, when, tu as appelé, okay? So uh, appelé is to call, call on the phone, for instance, okay? So in that case, you want to make the difference between something that happens and it's uh, an action. So tu as appelé, okay? And then here, you use l'imparfait, well, because it lasts longer. Okay, so je regardais la télé quand tu as appelé. All right? And then we've got another structure. So if you want to insist on the fact that something uh, it, well lasts and then something uh, continues, then we've got this structure. Être, so it's to be, être en train de, okay? And then you will put l'infinitive form after that, so the basic form. All right, so an example here as well. So I wanted to make the difference as well with, you know, between the, the, the um, passé composé form here. Je n'ai pas répondu. Répondre is to answer, okay? Car, because, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, okay? So faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, okay? And then in that case, you use this structure, j'étais en train de... Because you want to say that, well, it lasts, okay? It's quite long. It's not something that will take one minute or two minutes, but it's longer than that, okay? So that's uh, the reason why we use this j'étais en train de faire, so était en train de, as we saw here, okay? So you will have to use this verb être, okay? But then at the imparfait form, of course, okay? So, and then one thing that you should keep in mind is that être... So to be, croire, to believe, penser, to think, savoir, 
to know are often and it's quite important souvent often so it's not always okay because uh you it's not possible to say always especially if you're talking about french grammar okay but uh often you use them at uh, l'imparfait form okay now let's see how to construct uh this imparfait okay so i've been taking some verbs from, from the first group and then the second and the third group okay if you remember we've got three groups of verbs in uh, in french so the first one uh, regarder so is to watch okay and then i've been putting this new form at the present for a good reason you will see why a bit later so you should know the present form of regarder and it goes like nous Regardons, so that's the present form. Nous regardons, okay. For the second group, I've been taking finir, finir to finish, to end, okay. Same thing. You will put this new form at the present. Nous finissons, okay. And then for the third group of verbs, I took prendre. Prendre is to take, okay. And it goes like nous prenons. All right, so nous regardons, nous finissons, nous prenons. So the reason why I wanted you to see the new form is just because that's the form we will use to construct the imparfait. Okay, so the thing will be to take away the ending of nous. And the ending of nous, it's O-N-S like you saw here, here, and here. So the idea is that this ending, you will take it away, okay? Then, that's the thing we will keep. Regarde, like that, without the ending for nous. Finis, without the ending for nous. And then prun, without the ending, okay? And after that, you will add the endings for l'imparfait and they will be like for je a i s for tu a i s for il or elle a i t for nous i o n s for vous i e z and for il elle at the plural a i e n t all right, so now if you, uh, or if we talk about the pronunciation, um, the good thing is that this will be pronounced E, this will be pronounced E, obviously, because you write it the same way, this will be pronounced E as well. So final S and final T are not pronounced, and this is pronounced the same way. And the good news is that this form a e e n t is pronounced e as well okay so we've got e here e e and then e okay so that's quite easy to produce i mean it's not normal it's not uh, a big difficulty for the the students to 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 make this e sound okay and then for nu it will be so if you remember correctly so final s is not pronounced here Okay, and then this O N, so it's a nasal and it goes in your nose and it goes like on. Mm. All right, so you don't hear any N, so it's really on. Mm. Okay, when you add this E before, okay, you will get the Y, y sound. So you get Yon, Yon, that's the full form, okay, Yon, and then Y here, okay, so E, E, E. Ion, ye, e. All right. So now, je, regarde, and then e. So that's the full form that you, you will have, and then you will pronounce it je, regardais. All right. So if we had the example for finir, it was finis. Remember this form that we got from the new form of the present, okay, so finis, and then you add e, je finissais, all right, and then the last verb we had was 
prendre, if I remember correctly, yes. And it was pren, okay, the form that we got when we took away this ONS ending from the present, okay, so pren, and then you add your ending, eh, je prenais. Okay, so let's see how it goes for uh, all the forms. So, je regardais, so it's uh, regarder to watch. Tu regardais, il regardait, elle regardait, nous regardions, vous regardiez, il regardait, elle regardait. Okay, so remember, regardait, 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 and then as well, regardait. And after that, you've got this yon, as I said, regardion, and then yé, regardié. All right, let's see, finir now. Je finissais, tu finissais, il finissait, elle finissait, nous finissions, vous finissiez, il finissait, elle finissait. Okay, so same thing here. Have a look. Finissait, 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 same form. And then finissait here, same form, I mean phonetically, okay? And then yon, finition, and then finissier, all right? And the last verb we had with to take, prendre, je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, elle prenait, nous prenions, vous preniez, il prenait, elle prenait, okay? So remember that in that case you will have to really pronounce the e uh, like a uh, prenait. All right, so same thing here, final S not pronounced. Je prenais, tu prenais, il prenait, final T not pronounced, so the same form, okay? And then plural, as I said, prenais as well, okay? And here, prenions, preniez, okay? And then of course, of course, avoir and être can be in some cases quite tricky. So that's the reason why um, we'll take a few minutes to watch or to have a look at them. The first one, avoir, and well, it's not that tricky at all because it goes like that. J'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. So it is quite easy, honestly, it is quite easy. Just try to remember, especially if you want to use it only orally, then it's quite easy because it's avait, 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 and avait, remember, okay? So j'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, il avait, final T not pronounced, nous avions, let's make this beautiful liaison here, nous avions, okay? Vous aviez, same thing here, a little liaison, ils avaient, Elles avaient, okay? And then let's have a look at être. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient, okay? Same thing, not that difficult at all, and especially if you want to pronounce it, it's not really difficult. J'étais, okay? Remember, here we've got a uh, accent aigu, so it goes like E, all right? J'étais. Okay, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, little liaison here to make it more beautiful, nous étions, okay, final S not pronounced, remember, vous étiez, same thing here, little liaison, and then ils étaient, liaison as well, elles étaient, all right, that was it for l'imparfait. If you're not sure or if you've got few doubts again, don't be afraid to watch the video one more time. So this is the channel here, youtube.com slash imagie if you want more videos. And then the website imagie.net. Uh, don't be afraid to send me a message. Uh, tell me what you think about the, the video. Okay, have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 8, Leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll work together on le passé composé et l'imparfait. So, I just introduced this imparfait form in the previous lesson. And we saw le passé composé, well, a long time ago in a way. No, still, um, the thing is that normally with students, uh, when they've got uh, these two forms, so after having introduced this imparfait form, it's usually quite tricky and difficult to know exactly when to use le passé composé and l'imparfait. Okay, so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to just spend a few minutes with this 
video and just try to 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 work a little bit on that and see if uh, things and um, uses are uh, okay with you okay so let's start now so in this video first I will focus on l'imparfait so when should we use l'imparfait and then after that le passé composé okay so the first thing that will refresh will be l'imparfait okay so l'imparfait remember that you will use it when you want to describe something in the past okay so ex the example i took la pièce était grande et sombre okay la pièce the room grande big sombre dark okay so in that case you use être to be all right uh, and then you use it at the imparfait form to make this description Okay, the second use will be something that you have, so une habitude, it's an habit or something that you are used to do. Okay, so une habitude dans le passé. So the example, je partais le matin à 8 heures. Okay, so in that case you want to insist on the fact that it's something that you tend to do every morning. Maybe je partais le matin à 8 heures. Okay, so not so far from this habit uh, concept is uh, something that will repeat or that did repeat itself in the past. Okay, une répétition dans le passé. So if you want to express or to, uh, well, say something that repeats itself in the past, then in that case you should use l'imparfait. The example, nous allions, okay, so aller, to go, tous les soirs, okay, so every evening, au restaurant okay so in that case you should definitely use the imparfait form okay nous allions tous les soirs au restaurant all right another use would be une situation qui dure dans le passé durée to last okay so in that case i did write this sentence with the two forms so here you've got the imparfait form and here you've got the passé composé form Okay, and then we tend to use both here just to make well clearly the difference of use of them. So the first one, je regardais, regardais is to watch la télé. Okay, so je regardais la télé quand, when tu as appelé, appelé is to call. Okay, on the phone quand tu as appelé. All right. So we want here with this sentence here to use the imparfait form because. It lasts in the past, okay, so when you watch TV, maybe it, it won't last one minute or two, but a bit longer than that, okay. And then, tu as appelé, well, it's an action, something that doesn't take too long, if you compare it to the previous verb here, je regardais la télé, okay. So that's the reason why here, je regardais la télé, uh, will be used at the, 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 the imparfait form, because it lasts longer than the, the other one, okay, tu as appelé. All right, and then another structure that we can use as well if we want to insist on the fact that something lasts and something continue. Okay, pour insister sur la durée et continuité, then the structure is être en train de, and then you put your verb at the infinitive form here. So infinitive form is the basic form of the verb. Okay, so être, so that's the verb être that you should conjugate at the imparfait form. Okay, and then same thing here. I wanted to make the difference between the two. So here you've got this passé composé. Je n'ai pas répondu. So répondre to answer. Okay, maybe someone was calling on the phone. Je n'ai pas répondu. Okay. Car, because, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Faire mes devoirs, to do my homework, okay? So, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. So, in that case, you use this structure, so, être en train de, because you want to insist on the fact that, well, it takes a while to make them, okay? J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Now, le passé composé. So, le passé composé, well, the first use, of course, of le passé composé, it's une action, an action qui s'est passé, that took place avant le moment présent. So, before the present moment, the, the example that we could have here, je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Okay? And here, well, the first part here, je suis en retard, I am late. It's the present. Okay? And then you want to 
Well, give the reason why. Parce que, because, j'ai marché, so marché is to walk, ok, and this is the imparfait form, ok, trop lentement, too slowly, ok, je suis en retard parce que j'ai marché trop lentement. Then, une action dans le passé qui a des limites temporelles, ok, so it's an action that took place in the past, All right, but then you've got some clear limits when it started or when it ended. Okay, and then the example here. Dimanche dernier, j'ai dormi toute la journée. Dormir is to sleep. Okay, so this is here the passé composé form. Toute la journée, all day long. Okay, so you've got clearly a limit. Toute la journée, you know exactly when it stopped. All right. Une action qui est terminée. Okay. So, clearly here, if you want to introduce your birth date, then je suis né, okay, so it was an action in a way, okay, but still it's finished, so, le 16 juin 1970, okay, je suis né, so that's the reason why here, you will use this verb naître, okay, je suis né le 16 juin 1970. Une histoire composée de plusieurs actions, ok, so if you've got several actions, ok, in a story, then normally you should use le passé composé, for instance, hier, yesterday, je suis rentré, I came back home, ok, rentré, je suis rentré, j'ai préparé à manger, etc, etc, ok, so orally you will ex well explain to a friend or to a colleague what you've been doing uh, yesterday, ok, you want to introduce these actions, ok, and in that case, that's the tense that you will use, the passé composé, alright, if you want to Speak about an event of the past with, for instance, hier, yesterday, le mois dernier, last month, ce matin, this morning, cet après-midi, this afternoon, dimanche midi, so dimanche is um, Sunday, okay, midi, noon, jeudi, Thursday, matin, morning, okay, so with these structures, and if you're talking about an event, an action, okay, in that case, you definitely should use le passé composé. Okay, so of course these are examples. Okay, we've got so many, many others that I didn't have the. Well, I didn't want to put everything in this page. All right. So if you want to use, and this is quite important, a negative form. Okay, connected to uh, the present form or the present. Uh, for instance, if you want to say that, uh, so, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage, uh, patinage is uh, skate, ice skating, okay, you want to say that you never did ice skating, in that case, well, you should use the passé composé form, okay, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage, oops, I should put something instead, it's not a virgule, it's point, it should be point, sorry, it was a little mistake here, okay, but still, je n'ai jamais fait de patinage, okay, same example here, uh, il n'a jamais eu de chance, okay, avoir de la chance, to have luck, okay, il n'a jamais, jamais, never, eu de chance, so in that case, you should put that at the passé composé form. Okay, and then, well, same thing, nous n'avons pas eu de chance, all right, in that case it's with pas and not never, but it's clearly the same meaning, nous n'avons pas eu de chance, and in that case you should definitely use here the passé composé form, okay? So, of course, avoir and être can be quite tricky, so that's the reason why we'll take a few minutes to see them, and we'll start with avoir, okay? This is the imparfait form. J'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. And next to it, we'll put the passé composé form. J'ai eu. Tu as eu, il a lu, il a eu, sorry, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu. Ok, so let's take one minute to see them one more time. J'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, same thing, il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait, 
nous avions, little liaison, final S not pronounced, nous avions, vous aviez, same thing here, little liaison between the two, ils avaient, so remember, even if we've got this A, I, E, N, T, well, we don't pronounce it, or we don't pronounce this E, N, T, so we get avaient, okay, phonetically, ils avaient, okay, and then elles avaient, and now for the passé composé form, so if you remember clearly, we use the verb avoir at the present form, then we put this participe passé form, so it does mean that it will be the same all the time, that's the reason why we see it here, okay, and this is pronounced, so it's an exception because normally you should pronounce it differently, but, so it's an ex exception, it, it is pronounced U, okay, U, that's the way you should pronounce it, so j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu, vous avez eu, ils ont eu, elles ont eu, all right, so j'ai eu, tu as eu, il a eu, elle a eu, nous avons eu, okay, so here you can see that we make double liaison, nous avons eu, okay, same thing here, vous avez eu, ils ont, and then here as well, tu. Ils ont tu, elles ont tu. All right? Let's see être now. And it goes like j'étais. So, same thing here. We'll start with the, the imparfait form. Tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. And then the passé composé form. J'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été. Nous avons été, vous avez été, ils ont été, elles ont été. Okay, so let's take one minute again to pronounce them. J'étais, so final S not pronounced, tu étais, same form. Il était, elle était, final T not pronounced. Here, little liaison and final S not pronounced. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, liaison as well here, and then remember, this is not pronounced. Elles étaient. Okay. Then, so same, same rule as uh, we saw for uh, avoir. So you've got avoir here at the present form, and then you've got this participe passé form, so that will repeat itself every time, and it's pronounced like été. Été. All right. So j'ai été, tu as été, il a été, elle a été. So here, double liaison. Nous avons été, vous avez été, same thing here, double, double liaison, vous avez été, ils ont été, so same thing here, you get first the liaison z, and then you get the t, okay, ils ont été, all right, ils ont été, elles ont été, okay, I hope it was clear. Uh, if you want more videos, then uh, youtube.com slash imagier. And then if you want to send me a little message and um, check more things, more material, it's here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 8, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll discover together la forme passive. So it's quite important. Take the time to relax and we'll start right now. So I wanted to put an example, simple sentence, okay, here. We've got Jean mange une pomme, okay. So Jean, that's the name of the person. Mange, manger, to eat, and it's the present form. Une pomme, an apple, okay. So if we have a look at this sentence, of course, Jean is the subject of the sentence. Then we've got mange, manger, so it's the verb, okay? Then we'll have une pomme, so that's what we call complément d'objet direct. I know it's a bit scary, so complément just because it will complete the sentence, it will give more information, okay? Then objet direct, so objet it's not because it's uh, an apple, okay, it could be a person, it's uh, grammatically, it's an object, okay, so, and then direct, just because between your verb and this complement, you don't have any 
preposition. Okay, so normally we tend to write it like that, COD, okay, complement d'objet direct, all right? And then if you think about the sentence, normally when you get a sentence like that, so Jean mange une pomme, well, the important thing in this sentence is the subject, okay? For one good reason, it's just because we start with it, and as it's here in the first place, well, we tend to think that this is the most important thing of the of the sentence. Okay, so if we would like to put the focus on le complément d'objet direct, so if we would like to have une pomme as the main thing of the sentence, okay, so it would be actually the whole idea of this form passive okay so what could we do we could first take une pomme okay and then of course put it in the first place because well the focus will be on the first word or first thing that will come in the sentence then we take Jean and then of course, Jean is not coming right after because the verb should come between between the two. So it will be here. Okay? And after that, manger, so the verb mange here, should be transformed. And that's the whole thing of the passive form. Okay? You will have to use être. So you will have to conjugate être. Plus le participe passé of your verb. Okay, in that case it's quite easy because manger belongs to the first group of verbs, so regular verbs, and then when we talk about the participe passé form, it will be manger like that with the accent on the top of the uh here. Okay, so let's have a look how it will go. Une pomme est, so the verb être at the present form because here we've got a sentence at the present form manger okay so as i said you've got this uh, accent aigu okay and the important thing here is that because we construct this passive form with être then we should at the end of the participe passé add something if it's feminine or if it's plural in that case une pomme an apple you can see here that it's feminine, une pomme. So we will add this E, uh, so the mark of the feminine. Okay, so une pomme est mangé, Jean. And obviously something is missing here. Okay, and the thing that we will put or we will add to construct this passif will be par. All right, so now we've got this sentence, une pomme est mangée par Jean. And it's the passive form, okay? Forme active, Jean mange une pomme. Forme passive, une pomme est mangée par Jean. All right? Let's take another example. I changed, I did, I did put this la pomme instead of une pomme, but well, technically it's the same. The important thing is that this passive form will be, I mean, it will be possible to make it at the present form or even at the future, at the passé composé, at the imparfait, because the only thing that will change will be être, okay? So in that case, Example for le présent, Jean mange la pomme. You change it and you get la pomme est mangée par Jean. Okay, so that's the one we saw, so it's actually quite easy. But then now, let's see if we've got le futur. So the sentence will go like Jean mangera, okay, so it's this will eat, okay, la pomme. And then, if you want to put this sentence at the passive form, then la pomme sera, 
So remember, sera, it's the form of être at the future. Okay, so that's the only thing that will change. So you definitely should know by heart all the form of être and obviously avoir, but I mean, not avoir for this lesson, but still. So you should know them by heart because you will have to use them. Uh, for instance, in this uh, passive form, you, you, you must use them. So la pomme sera mangé par Jean. So the rest doesn't change. I mean, that's the only thing that you will have to change. You put this être form, okay, at the correct tense. In that case, it's the future. And then let's see le passé composé now. Jean a mangé la pomme, okay, and then if you, well, change it and put it at the passive form. So la pomme a été, remember this a été, is the passé composé form of être, okay? Mangé par Jean. The rest doesn't change, okay? So let's have a look at, at the conditionnel présent because we saw it already in the previous unit. Jean mangerait la pomme, okay? Would eat, okay? See, mangerait la pomme. So if you change it, la pomme serait, okay? And that's the conditionnel présent form of être. Manger par Jean. Ok? Then, imparfait. Jean mangeait la pomme. La pomme était mangée par Jean. And the last one, conditionnel passé, because that's the last one we saw. Jean aurait mangé la pomme. La pomme aurait été. And that's here. Aurait été conditionnel passé form of être mangé par Jean. Ok? So, remember, être, then participe passé, then par. Don't forget this par because it's, uh, it's quite important. Ok? And this will be, well, the, the three elements that will, you will need to, to, to use to uh, construct this uh, form passive. Ok? I hope it was clear. Uh, have a great day and then uh, remember more videos on youtube.com slash imagier and then don't be afraid and send me a little something just to tell me what you think about the videos. The website is here uh, and then you can find more material there. Bye bye! Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 8, Leçon H. And in this lesson we'll see together la conjugaison à la forme passive. So we saw la forme passive in the previous video lesson, so I definitely advise you to watch it if you didn't do it. Uh, and then in this lesson we'll take a few examples, or at least two examples, two verbs, and then we'll see how they, how they go, okay? So remember uh, that we'll see in this lesson le présent, le futur, le passé composé, le conditionnel présent, and then l'imparfait. These are the verbs that we already covered in these lessons or in the previous lessons, okay? So, that's the reason why we will try to see how they go at the passive form, alright? So, remember that if, we, if you want to construct this uh, form passive, then the first thing will be être, and this verb, être, will be changed. So according to the fact whether it's present, futur, passé composé, etc. And then after that, you will put this participe passé form, okay, to get your passive form. All right, so that's it. We'll take two examples. The first one will be admirer, to admire. And then the second one will, will be choisir, to choose, okay. But then the idea is that as we will change them in or at this uh, form passive so clearly it will be to be admired and to be chosen okay so let's see now admiré présent so it will be je suis admiré tu es admiré il est admiré elle est admirée nous sommes admirés vous êtes admiré ils sont admirés Elles sont admirées. All right, so as you can see, être will be the only thing that will change here. All right. Well, if we are really honest, then we can say that the participe passé form here is changing as well. Because if you can see, if you have a look here, it's here like that written A. And then here, you just add this 
e, okay? Remember that we add this final e uh, because we've got here a feminine subject, and so this final e uh, is the mark of the feminine, so singular feminine, okay? But then if you really want to think about that phonetically, you don't pronounce it, so whether it's masculine admire or feminine admire, you will pronounce them the same way. But still, if you want to write it correctly, you should add this e. Uh. So same thing here, if we look at this last form here, we've got this S at the end, so S is the mark of the plural, so you should put it at the end, you don't pronounce it, okay, so you get admire, but still you should put it. And here you've got, well, first the feminine, E, uh, and then the plural, S. Phonetically, it is the same, admire. Okay, so you've got phonetically only one form and it's admire, okay, but then keep in mind that because we constructed with être here, then we should put the feminine here if the subject is feminine, the plural here if the subject is masculine plural here, and then the feminine plural here if the subject is feminine plural. Okay, so it will be the same for all the tenses. Okay, so I won't repeat that after. Okay, and then keep in mind that être, so the verb, will be the only thing that will change in this, I mean, these structures. All right, so let's see now the futur. Je serai admiré. Tu seras admiré. Il sera admiré. Elle sera admirée. Nous serons admirés. Vous serez admirés. Ils seront admirés. Elles seront admirées. All right. So if we want to make this structure at the passé composé form, so j'ai été admiré. So you can see that here you get j'ai été. All right. So it's the verb être to be. Okay. But at the passé composé form. All right. Tu as été admiré. Il a été admiré. Elle a été admirée. Nous avons été admirés. Vous avez été admiré. Ils ont été admirés. Elles ont été admirées. All right. So if we want to make it the conditionnel present form, then we will get je serais admiré. Tu serais admiré. Il serait admiré. Elle serait admirée. Nous serions admirés. Vous seriez admiré. Il serait admiré. Elle serait admirée. Okay, so same thing here. If you look carefully, that's only the verb être that will change. And then imparfait form would be j'étais admiré, tu étais admiré, il était admiré, elle était admirée, nous étions admirés, vous étiez admirés, ils étaient admirés, elles étaient admirées. All right? So Clearly, it's not that difficult. The only thing that you should definitely remember by heart is the verb. It's the verb être at all the forms that we already covered. Okay, and then you will have to use it well clearly to make this uh, passive form. All right. So the second verb that I wanted to uh, will introduce was uh, choisir. Okay. So at the present form, it will go like: Je suis choisi. Tu es choisi. Il est choisi. Elle est choisie. Nous sommes choisis, vous êtes choisis, ils sont choisis, elles sont choisies. So same thing here that we had for admirer. So remember that you will have to here, for example, put the E uh at the end for the feminine, okay? Because here we've got the feminine singular, so we just add E, uh, okay? You will have this S at the end here for the plural, so masculine plural, and you will have this a s feminine plural form okay same rule you don't pronounce them so phonetically you will have choisi 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 and choisi so the same phonetical form okay and it's quite easy to remember je serai choisi tu seras choisi il sera choisi elle sera choisi nous serons choisis Vous serez choisi, ils seront choisis, elles seront choisies. Ok, let's see the passé composé form. J'ai été choisi, tu as été choisi, il a été choisi, elle a été choisie. 
Nous avons été choisis. Vous avez été choisis. Ils ont été choisis. Elles ont été choisies. Then the conditional present form. Je serai choisi. Tu serais choisi. Il serait choisi. Elle serait choisie. Nous serions choisis. Vous seriez choisi. Il serait choisi. Elle serait choisie. Ok. And last but not least. Imparfait. J'étais choisi. Tu étais choisi. Il était choisi. Elle était choisie. Nous étions choisis. Vous étiez choisis. Ils étaient choisis. Elles étaient choisies. Alright. So, that's it for la conjugaison à la forme passive. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier and the website imagier.net if you want more material. Or then if you want to send me a little message, it would be nice. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 8, leçon I. And in this lesson, we'll work on vocabulary for a change because we've been doing grammar quite much. So the topic is la géographie. L'Europe. Okay, so I did put this F just to give you the information that it's feminine, okay, because it doesn't show here with the article. L'Europe. L'Asie. L'Afrique. L'Amérique du Nord, l'Amérique centrale, l'Amérique du Sud. Ok, so let's see them one more time. L'Europe. Remember this final E, uh, it's not really present. It only gives you the possibility to pronounce this P, P, P at the end. Ok, Europe. L'Asie, same thing here, final E uh, is not pronounced. L'Afrique, same thing here, final E, uh, it's only the K, K at the end that you will hear. L'Afrique. Okay. Amérique, same thing as Afrique. Amérique du Nord. Final day, not pronounced. L'Amérique du Nord. L'Amérique centrale. Same thing here. Centrale, remember. E-N, nasal. So it goes in your nose. En, en. Centrale. All right. L'Amérique centrale. L'Amérique du Sud. Here you should pronounce the D. Sud. Sud, ok? L'Amérique du Sud. Alright? So, one more time. L'Europe, l'Asie, l'Afrique, l'Amérique du Nord, l'Amérique centrale, l'Amérique du Sud. L'Australie, l'Océanie, l'Antarctique, l'Eurasie, l'Océan Atlantique. L'océan Pacifique. Ok, so let's see them one more time. L'Australie, final E uh, not pronounced. L'Océanie, final E uh, not pronounced. Remember, Q-U-E here, it's K. Ok, so tic. L'Antarctique, l'Antarctique. L'Eurasie, final E uh, not pronounced. L'Eurasie. Ok, same thing here for the ik. Ok. L'océan Atlantique. 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 L'océan Pacifique. L'océan Indien. L'océan Arctique. La mer du Nord. La mer de Chine. La mer des Antilles. La mer Méditerranée. Ok, so let's see them. L'océan Indien. So remember here it's nazar and it can be quite tricky. So first you've got this un here and then you've got this yin, yin. Ok, Indien. L'océan Indien. L'océan Arctique. Remember, tic, ik. La mer du Nord. Final day not pronounced. La mer de Chine. Remember, don't insist on the e. Uh, Shin. Ok? And then this CH, sh, 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 Shin. Alright? La mer des Antilles. So here it's quite interesting because, well, you've got this E and then double L, E, S. Ok? So final S and E, really you don't pronounce them. So you get this 
I, I sound. Antilles, ok La mer des Antilles. The liaison between the two. Des Antilles. La mer des Antilles. La mer Méditerranée. Ok, here final E uh, not pronounced, but then you pronounce this E at the end. Méditerranée. Ok, la mer Méditerranée. La mer Rouge. La mer Caspienne. La mer Noire. La mer de Bering. Ok, so, la mer Rouge. Remember, G and then E, J, J. Rouge. Ok, la mer Rouge. La mer Caspienne. Ok, E and then double consonant here, and it's the same. And N, so it does open the sound here. So it's E, E. Caspienne. Caspienne. Ok, then here, la mer Noire. Same thing here that we had previously. Final E not pronounced. Ok, and then O, I, remember, wa, 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 Noire. Noir, la mer Noire, ok, la mer de Bering. That's it for this lesson, it was quite short, but I hope it was relaxing and in interesting. So, the, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier, that's here. And then if you want to send me a little message, then imagier.net, or then find more material. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon J. And in this lesson we'll see some vocabulary and we'll see la météo. So I hope it's okay with you. Let's start right now. La météo. Un nuage. Une pluie. Une goutte de pluie. Un éclair. Une brume. Un brouillard. All right, so let's see them one more time. Un nuage. Une pluie. Une goutte de pluie. Un éclair. So you can see I make this little liaison between the two. Un éclair. Une brume. Un brouillard. Final day not pronounced. Une rosée. Un verglas. Un ciel clair, un ciel couvert, un ciel nuageux, une bruine. So let's see them. Une rosée, final E not pronounced. Un verglas, final S not pronounced. Un verglas, un ciel clair, un ciel couvert, final T not pronounced. Un ciel couvert. Un ciel nuageux. This can be quite tricky, but take the time to nu a je. Remember, final X here, not pronounced. Nu a je. Ok? Nuageux. Un ciel nuageux. Ok? Une bruine. Une pluie. Une neige. Une averse, un orage, un ouragan, une averse de grêle, une pluie, final E uh, not pronounced, une neige, une averse, so same thing here, hein? neige, final E uh, not pronounced, you only pronounce this J, same thing here, averse, ok, S is pronounced, the E uh, is not pronounced. Un orage, same thing here, j, ok, not the e. Un ouragan, so liaison here, like we had here as well. Une averse de grêle. All right, so I wanted to put them with the, the article un ou une to make it more clear, but it's uh, clear that in some cases, uh, well, you will have to use the instead of. Uh, so le or la 
okay, instead of un ou une, but it's it was just to make it more clear that I wanted to use only un ou une, and after that you can decide whether you want to use uh, this article or the other one, okay? So this is it for this lesson. YouTube.com slash Imagier is the place where you can go to find more videos, and the website is here, more material, and then you can send me a little message. Thank you, bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon K. And in this lesson, we'll discover together, if it does arrive, yes it does, les climats. Okay, so it will be a short one, vocabulary one, but still it's quite interesting. Let's see that. Les climats. Les climats tropicaux. Les climats tempérés. Les climats polaires. Okay, so, les climats tropicaux. So you can see that even if we've got the plural form here, S, we don't pronounce the S, and then we don't pronounce the T either. Les climats tropicaux. Final X, not pronounced. Les climats tempérés. Final S, not pronounced, but then you should definitely pronounce the accent. Tempéré, okay? Les climats polaires. So, same thing, same thing here. E uh, and S are not pronounced. Polaire. Okay. Les climats continentaux, les climats subtropicaux, les climats de montagne, les climats subarctiques. Okay, so les climats continentaux, remember, final X not pronounced, and then this AU together, they give you the sound O. Okay, les climats subtropicaux. Les climats de montagne. So remember here, O N on mon ta and then this G N E N N montagne. All right. Les climats subarctiques. All right. So it was just a practice pronunciation. Uh, if you want more videos, then whoops, it's here. youtubecom imagier and the website is here. Imagier.net. More material is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon L. And in this lesson we'll discover together le plus que parfait. So it's uh, quite interesting, not that difficult and quite useful. So let's see what le plus que parfait is. So first in this video, as usual for the tenses because it's a past tense, we'll first discover together or see together l'utilisation, so when should we use le plus que parfait, and then how do we make, construct, build this tense. Okay, the first thing, utilisation, when do we use le plus que parfait, important. If you want to, well, should I, yeah, I will read that the French way first, okay, exprimer des faits qui se sont passés avant d'autres faits passés. Oh my God, it can be quite tricky. It's not really tricky. Let's say that if you want to resume or if you want to say it fast, le plus que parfait is the past in the past. Okay, so let's see. Now you've got the timeline here. Let's see first, second and third thing. The first one could be Le présent, so we are here right now, okay? Then, this is the past, so if you want to express something that happened in the past, whether you use le passé composé or we saw that previously, l'imparfait, okay? And then, you've got here, le plus que parfait, okay? So, first, if you want to talk about what happened yesterday or then even years ago, so you will have to use whether passé composé or imparfait, okay? But then, if you want to make a relation to something that happened previously, you should definitely use this plus que parfait form, okay? So that's the reason why we tend to say that it's the past in the past, all right? So, Let's have an example. Ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau que tu avais préparé hier. Okay. If we have a look, we've got 
two verbs in this sentence. This is the first one, j'ai mangé. It is the passé composé form. This is the second one. Tu avais préparé. This is le plus que parfait. Ok? Passé composé. Plus que parfait. So, what do you want to say here? You want to say, ce matin, this morning, j'ai mangé, mangé is to eat, le gâteau, the cake, que, that, tu avais préparé, préparé is to prepare, yesterday, hier. Ok? So, you want to say that, ce matin, j'ai mangé le gâteau, ok? So, it happened in the morning, this morning, and then yesterday, you had prepared this cake. Okay, so that's the reason why in the second part of the sentence you use le plus que parfait because this action happened before. All right, so it was the past in the past. Okay, so let's see now how to construct it. And it's not that difficult because first, if you have a look, so I did put some uh, regular verbs here. First one, je mangeais au restaurant. So this form here is the imparfait. Okay, so why did I put the imparfait? Just for you to have a look at the ending of these verb. This is avoir. Okay, so you can see that they end actually the same way. A-I-S, A-I-S. Okay, and then if you have a look here, you've got manger. Manger, so you can notice that this is the participe passé form of the verb manger. Manger is to eat. Okay, so first you've got avoir, then you've got the participe passé. Okay, maybe it rings a bell for you. Uh, second example, tu regardais la télévision. Okay, tu avais regardé la télévision. So if you have a look, well, it looks the same. You've got first avoir, then you've got participe passé here. Okay? And then, so I took this verb aller. Aller is to go. And remember, when we've got these composed tenses, it's a bit tricky because it doesn't use avoir as most of the verbs, but it uses être. And look here, it's the same. Il était allé. So it does use être here. And then we've got the participe passé form. All right. So the rule is that if you want to construct this plus que parfait form, then you should use first avoir at the imparfait, then the participe passé, and you will get your plus que parfait form. Okay. In some cases, you will use être at the imparfait form, then the participe passé, and you will get le plus que parfait. Okay? We've been covering already few composed tenses in French and well it, it does follow exactly the same rules. Okay? So that's the reason why it will be quite familiar for you because the following verbs aller to go, arriver to arrive, descendre to go down, devenir to become, entrer to enter, to come in, Monter, to go up, mourir, to die, naître, to born, partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fell, to fall, sorry, and then venir, to come. So all these verbs will use être, as I mean they do for all the other composed tense that we saw, uh, like passé composé, for instance, okay? And then all the verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs like se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter, so all these verbs will also require être, okay, for the plus que parfait, okay? So let's see one more time the imparfait form of avoir, and être as well, but we'll start with avoir, just because that's the form, I mean, these are the forms that you will have to use when you want to construct this plus que parfait. So it goes like, j'avais, tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, 
ils avaient, elles avaient. Ok, and then for être, j'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Alright, so you can see here that we've got this A-I-S ending and A-I-T ending. You pronounce them the same way, ok? J'avais, tu avais, il avait. And then you saw probably that we've got also here A-V-A-I-E-N-T, but then you pronounce it avait. So the same way as we pronounce here, ok? J'avais, tu avais, il avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient. Okay. The only difference is that you will have to make the liaison between the two. Elles avaient, ils avaient. Okay. Same thing here. Était, était, était. And the last one, était. So you pronounce them the same way. J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. All right. So, remember that for these participe passé forms. So, the second part that you should have okay um, when we're talking about uh, verbs so in French we've got three groups okay the first one is the er verbs so verbs ending with er only one exception and it's aller but then the good news is is that aller will behave the same way so it won't be tricky so remember that when you've got a verb like parler for instance here parler is to talk or to speak it ends with er Okay, you will take this er away and you will replace it with a accent aigu, parler. Same thing, regarder, to watch, you take this er away and you put this e here. Aller, even if it doesn't belong to the first group, it will behave the same way, so that's a good news. Aller, er, you take it away and then you put this e, okay? Second group of verbs. ER, unfortunately for you, not all the ER verbs, okay? But then these are from the second group. Choisir to choose. You take this ER away and then you change it. You put E instead. Choisi. Finir to finish to end. ER away, same rule. And then you put fini. Unir, ER, you take it away to unite. And then you get uni. Okay, after that, when we talk about the third group, it's quite tricky, and my advice would be to try to learn them by heart, like in many languages. But still, we have some subgroups. Okay, so you've got a list here. So the one that will end with U, for instance, connaître, to know, être will become U, connu, all right, voir, to see, voir will become U, vu, partir, Well, in that case, they will have this E. Even if it ends with ER, uh, it's not from the second group, it's from the third group. Okay, so, but then it becomes parti. Okay, so quite easy. Rire will become ri. Okay, partir to leave and then rire to laugh. IT, like écrire to write. ERE will become IT here. Dire to say. ERE will become IT. Okay, remember, you put this T, you don't pronounce it. Écrit, dit. All right? And then the last subgroup here, or I think it's the last, I'm not sure about that anymore. Mettre, E, T, T, R, E will become ES. Mi, same advice here, don't pronounce the final S like we had here. T is not pronounced, S is not pronounced. Mi, uh, mettre, to put. And then prendre, Prendre is to take, okay, E-N-D-R-E, -E, and it will become E-S, pris, all right? An example for parler, so parler will go like that for the plus que parfait. J'avais parlé, tu avais parlé, il avait parlé, elle avait parlé, nous avions parlé, vous aviez parlé, ils avaient parlé, elles avaient parlé. Okay, so if you look carefully, I did put this E uh, in orange just to show you that when you construct, I mean, a normal structure or simple structure like subject, verb, okay, nothing in between, then if you have avoir, you don't put anything at the end. So you don't need to add this E for the feminine or S for the plural, just keep your participe passé like that. If, 
you constructed with avoir. But, have a look here. Aller, you write it like that. Aller. This is the masculine singular form, so basic form. Feminine singular form, you will have to add this E uh, for the feminine. Masculine plural form, you will have to add this S for the plural. And then here, feminine plural form, you will have to add this E, uh, S, so E uh for the feminine and S for the plural. The good news is that phonetically they go the same way, aller, 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 all right? But if you want to write correctly, remember to put E uh for the feminine, S for the plural, and obviously E, uh, S for the feminine plural, okay? So let's see aller now. J'étais allé. Tu étais allé. Il était allé. Elle était allée. Nous étions allés. Vous étiez allé, ils étaient allés, elles étaient allés. All right, so you can hear that here, for instance, I make here a liaison, ils étaient, and then here I make a liaison as well. Ils étaient allés, elles étaient allés. All right, and then remember, allez, 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 and then allez. So the same phonetical form, okay? If you want to construct this plus que parfait, so I took this example with a um, verbe réfléchir, okay? Je m'étais présenté, tu t'étais présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présentée, nous nous étions présentés, vous vous étiez présenté, il s'était présenté, elle s'était présentée. All right, so remember, all these reflexive verbs, so les verbes réfléchis, will require all the time être, okay? Remember, avoir at the imparfait form, and then participe passé, and you will get a beautiful plus que parfait, and in some cases, être at the imparfait form, plus participe passé, will give you another beautiful plus que parfait. That was, it. that was it for the plus que parfait. Uh, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 8, Leçon M. And in this lesson, we'll work on les pronoms relatif. So pronounce um, one more time, yes, because we, we've got quite many pronouns in French and we use them quite often, okay, but in that case we're going to work on les pronoms relatifs and we'll see first qui, then que, after that dont, and finally où, okay. So the first one that we'll work with will be qui, okay. So pronounce as usual, are these little words that you use to avoid repetition if something was already said or if you want to, in one sentence, combine two different sentences. Okay, so the first one, key, normally we use it because it's subject. Okay, so it can be whether for a person or a thing, pour une personne ou une chose, okay, and then the first examples that we saw, we'll see, sorry, will be for une personne, okay, so, qui, so if we take this example, the first one, first sentence, nous connaissons un homme, okay, connaître is to know, nous connaissons un homme, and then we've got the second sentence, cet homme travaille dans un restaurant, Okay, so it's totally possible to have these two sentences like that, okay, but then if you look carefully, we repeat cet homme or un homme, okay, we've got here cet homme, okay, and it's here in the first sentence as well. Let's imagine that we would like to combine these two sentences, make one and just avoid repeating here un homme or cet homme. In that case, well, we will use this pronom relatif, okay? We will use this qui 
Just because if you look carefully in the second sentence here, cet homme travaille dans un restaurant, well, cet homme here is subject of the verb. And that's the reason why we'll use qui. Okay? So it could be a person, like in that example, okay, cet homme, but it could be also an object or a thing. Okay? So the sentence you will get will be this one. Nous connaissons un homme qui, and that's where you put your pronom relatif, travaille dans un restaurant. Okay? So it is quite easy to make. It's not that difficult. You just need to remember that it should come well before the verb here. All right. And then we've been shooting this key just because it is the subject of the verb. All right. So let's see now the same sentence. Nous connaissons un homme. But then here, if you look, cet homme a travaillé dans un restaurant. So here we've got the passé composé form here, you remember, you put avoir first and then you put here your pa participe passé form, all right? So of course cet homme, we would like to avoid repeating this one, so we'll get this sentence, nous connaissons un homme qui a travaillé dans un restaurant. So basically it is quite simple because uh, it doesn't change that much, you only need to use, again, one more time, this pronoun relative key, okay, before the verb. So keep in mind that even if you've got two forms here, it's only one verb, okay? It's composed, you've got first avoir and then participe présent, uh, sorry, participe passé, but still it's only one verb here, so that's the reason why key should come before, okay? And then we'll see a third example. Nous connaissons un homme, cet homme va travailler dans un restaurant. Okay, so in that case, what do we have here? We've got a second sentence in which we've got this is going to work. Okay, so va, it's aller. Okay, so that's what we call futur proche. Okay, so this man, cet homme, is going to work, va travailler, all right? So, of course, same thing here. We don't want to repeat cet homme or un homme, okay? So, we will get this. Nous connaissons un homme qui va travailler dans un restaurant, all right? So, just before the verbs here, all right? So, it's quite simple, okay? Let's see now if we replace une chose, a thing, okay, with qui. So... Je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge, ok? Regardez ce to watch, une voiture a car. Je regarde une voiture, cette voiture est rouge. So of course, in that case, we would like to avoid the repetition of une voiture, ok? And then, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge, all right? So, je regarde une voiture qui est rouge. So exactly the same thing here, you just put this qui, and then you get the verb after, uh, after that, est rouge, all right? Let's see the same sentence, but then let's put here the uh, passé composé. J'ai regardé une voiture, cette voiture était imparfait, rouge, okay? J'ai regardé une voiture, cette voiture était rouge. So same thing here, we don't want to repeat voiture, then we will get the simple sentence, j'ai regardé une voiture, qui était rouge. So just before the verb. Let's put that at the future. So, je vais regarder une voiture. So I am going to watch une voiture. Okay. Cette voiture sera... So here you've got the real future, what we call futur simple. Okay. Is, so it's uh, will be, uh, sera rouge. Exactly the same thing, we don't want to repeat une voiture, so je vais regarder une voiture qui sera rouge. All right, so it's really simple. You should keep in mind that first first thing, well, of course, you get to spot the, the, the word you want to replace. And if it is subject like we have here, then you should put qui. So whether it's a person or an object or a thing, 
So it will be key just because it's the subject of the sentence, okay? And you have to put it here before the verb, okay? Now we'll have a look at que, okay? So que, you should remember that it will replace what we call complément d'objet direct. So complément, it's because it will complete the sentence. Objet, because it's what we call grammatical object. Okay, and then direct, just because we don't use or we won't use any preposition between the verb and this grammatical object. Okay, and then normally we tend to write it shortly, C-O-D. Okay, so if you see this C-O-D written somewhere, it's just because we want to say complément d'objet direct. Okay, and then the same thing will work first with the person, so example with persons, and then shows things, and then let's start now. So que, c'est l'acteur, tu admires cet acteur. Okay, so in that case, of course, if we look carefully, we would like to avoid repeating acteur, because it's in the first sentence, and then it is in the second sentence as well. But if you have a look here, in the second sentence, you've got tu, okay, so it's the subject, then you've got Admire, so it's the verb admire to admire, all right. And after that, you've got cet acteur, so the thing we would like to replace, okay. And then if we look carefully, so what we saw is that cet acteur is well. First, it's a complement, okay. It will complete the the, the subject and the verb. Then it is what we call grammatical object and if you look carefully between admire and cet acteur we don't have anything so we don't have any preposition so it does mean that it is direct direct okay in that case we should use que all right so let's look at the sentence now c'est l'acteur que tu admires all right so you first put back your first sentence here c'est l'acteur, then you put this pronom relatif que, and then the sentence continues, tu admires, subject, verb. Okay? Now let's have a look at the same thing, but at the feminine. C'est l'actrice, tu admires cette actrice. Okay? So, Exactly the same sentence, but it's the feminine form. C'est l'actrice, tu admires cette actrice. Okay, we don't want to repeat actrice, obviously. Then we get, c'est l'actrice que tu admires. All right. So, same concept, same structure, no problem. So, let's see now with une chose, a thing. Okay. C'est la voiture, tu adores cette voiture. Okay, and then obviously we don't want to repeat la voiture, okay, adorer, to adore, tu adores cette voiture, c'est la voiture que tu adores. Alright, so same concept, you first put que here, then subject verb. Okay, be careful, and be careful at the passé composé form. Why? Well, look. Normally, when we construct a sentence, we first start with the sujet. Then we've got the verb. Then we've got, so what we saw, complément d'objet direct. Okay? And normally, when we introduce the passé composé form, we say that if we use avoir, normally you don't have to put anything at the end of your participe passé form, so you don't need to mark the feminine form or the plural, or the feminine plural, okay? But then, when we've got this special structure with first le pronom relatif COD, so what we just saw, this que, before the verb, the rule will be that you will have to put the feminine or the plural or the feminine plural, at the end of your participe passé. So let's have a look first, and it will be quite easy, because it is here, have a look, c'est l'acteur, tu as admiré cet acteur, so here, you've got the 
passé composé form, okay? But then it's the masculine. So normally it shouldn't be a problem if we look the sentence. C'est l'acteur que tu as admiré. All right, so we've got this que, pronom relatif, complément d'objet direct. So I told you that if it if it's before the verb, at the passé composé form, it can be tricky. But in that case, it's the masculine form, so it doesn't change anything at the end of your participe passé form here. That's the reason why it doesn't change here. If you look carefully, it's the same form. Okay? But if we take now the feminine form, c'est l'actrice, tu as admiré cette actrice. We want to replace actrice, then we will have c'est l'actrice que, so the structure doesn't change at all, tu as admiré. The only thing that you will have to put is this e, uh, which is the mark of the feminine, at the end of your participe passé form here. Okay, the good news is that phonetically here you don't pronounce it. Okay, but in some cases you will have some participe passé ending with maybe T or something like that. And then if you put the feminine form, you will have to pronounce it. Okay, so it's really important to remember that with this kind of structure, when you've got this pronom relatif and then the que complément d'objet direct at the passé composé form. And you've got the feminine form, you will have to add a at the end of your participe passé here. Okay? If we've got the plural, like here, so masculine, but then the plural form, ce sont les acteurs, tu as admiré ces acteurs, okay? So we just don't want to repeat les acteurs, ce sont les acteurs que tu as admiré, and then have a look here. We've got the mark of the plural, and it's S at the end, okay? So, same thing as usual in French. You don't pronounce it, okay? But it's really important to remember that you should put at the end of your participe passé here, the S, okay? If we have, like here, the feminine plural form, Ce sont les actrices. Tu as admiré ces actrices. Okay. We don't want to repeat les actrices. Then, ce sont les actrices que tu as admiré. Okay. So remember here, admiré. Well, first you've got this E, uh, mark of the feminine. Then you've got this S at the end, mark of the plural. Okay. Phonetically, you don't pronounce it. But still, remember, you get to put it, okay? A uh, S. So as I said, you know, for this admire, adore, all these examples that we've been covering so far, you don't pronounce it. So that's the reason why I wanted to put few sentences in which, well, you'll see that you can see the difference. So the first one, c'est le camion que tu as conduit. Okay, le camion, it's the truck, okay? Que tu as conduit, conduire is to drive, okay? And you get here the passé composé form, okay? So in that case, of course, we've been using this pronom relatif, que, okay? And it's complément d'objet direct, all right? It is before the verb tu as conduit here. So normally it does mean that the rule, well, tells us to, 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 to put something at the end of the participe passé, if it's the feminine, or if it's the plural, or feminine plural. In that case, we've got le camion, so we don't put anything at the end of conduit. We just leave conduit like that, okay? But if we put, well, the same sentence, but at the plural. In that case, ce sont les camions que tu as conduit, okay? You will have this S, you don't pronounce it, but it will be here. Now, the feminine. So we take la voiture. The car, okay, la voiture, it's feminine. C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. And that's when you hear the difference between conduit, because remember, final T is not pronounced, conduit, here, and then the feminine, conduite. Okay, so here you can listen to this t, t okay, conduite, right? C'est la voiture que tu as conduite. 
Okay, and then the same thing for the plural, so it will be feminine plural because it's les voitures. Ce sont les voitures que tu as conduites. All right, so that's the reason why it's quite important to remember this rule, even if in most of the cases you won't pronounce the difference between your participe passé, whether it's at the masculine, the feminine, or the plural form. But in some cases, like, well, these examples, you can hear the difference between at least here the masculine and the feminine form. Okay? And then the last thing, tricky thing <laughs> with que, is if you put something after and it starts with a vowel, so remember, as usual, in French, when we've got this uh and something after, so a vowel, they don't really get along. So the rule is that you should take a uh away, okay? So it will go like that. So c'est la boisson que il demande. So normally, if we if we respect the rule, you know, we should put this que pronoun, okay? But then, as I showed, they don't really get along as usual, and so que or a uh, should disappear. So you get the final structure. C'est la boisson qu'il demande. Now let's have a look at don. Okay? And the important thing with don is that you will use this don instead of complément avec préposition de. All right, so the important thing here is that, so it should be com a complement, so something that will complete the sentence, so coming after the verb, all right? And then it should be introduced with this preposition de here, all right? So let's have a look. And well, as we did previously, so we'll first start with the person, and then after that, in chose a thing. Voici l'homme... Tout le monde parle de cet homme. Okay, so voici l'homme. Here is the man. Okay, so even if it, well, it looks a bit strange to have a short sentence like that. Okay, but still it was for the example, so I thought it might be useful. And then tout le monde, tout le monde, everybody, everyone, parle, to talk, de cet homme. Okay, so the important thing here is to spot first, well, of course, we've got the subject here. Tout le monde. Then we've got the verb parler. Okay. Then if you look carefully between our complement here, set on, because that's the thing we don't want to repeat, and the verb. So between them, we've got the preposition de. Okay. And it tells us that if we don't want to repeat l'homme, okay, we will have to use this don pronom here. And the sentence will go like that. Voici l'homme. So the first one doesn't change. Don. So you put here your pronom relatif. Then tout le monde parle. So you just put back what we've got. Subject and verb. Okay. It's not really difficult. Then if we put the same structure but then at the passé composé form. Voici l'homme. Tout le monde a parlé de cet homme. So same thing. We don't want to repeat l'homme. Okay. Voici l'homme. Dont. So same position. Tout le monde a parlé. Okay. So it doesn't change anything. You just put it. But then, well, the tense is uh, is different here because it's passé composé. Okay. So let's see now if we would put the same sentence, but then at the Future proche, so near future. Normally, I tend to put this structure just because it means that you've got two verbs here, okay, just to see. So, l'homme is the thing we don't want to repeat. So, voici l'homme dont tout le monde va parler. Okay, so it doesn't change anything. It should be here, and then the sentence continues. Let's see if we want to replace une chose, a thing, then... Je n'aime pas le livre. Nous nous servons de ce livre. Okay, so aimer is to like. In that case, you've got the negative form. Je n'aime pas le livre. Okay, nous nous servons. Okay, so in that case, I wanted to use this se servir. Se servir is to use something, but it's se servir, so it's a reflexive verb. Okay, de ce livre. And then you can see that we've got ce livre. 
Okay, we've got the verb here and between the two we've got the preposition de. So it does tell us that if we don't want to repeat le livre, we will have to use this pronom relatif don. So the sentence will be, je n'aime, sorry I forgot the pas, <laughs> je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons. All right, so remember, you should put the pas. <laughs> I forgot to write it, sorry. Je n'aime pas le livre dont nous nous servons. Okay, and then, où, okay, the last one for this lesson. Où, well, you've got two options. Whether you will use this où to replace what we call complément de lieu. Lieu is a place, okay, or then you will use it to replace un complément de temps, okay, temps, time. Let's see first if we want to replace complément de lieu, okay. So, je vous présente la ville, je suis né dans cette ville, okay. So, je vous présente, présenter to present, la ville, la ville is the town, Je suis né, I was born, dans cette ville. Okay, so in that case, well, have a look. You've got cette ville and la ville. So probably that's the thing we don't want to repeat. Okay, and then here we get dans, so it's in. Okay, so you know that it's a place. All right, so it's what we could call or what we call complément de lieu. So it's a place. All right, so if you want to avoid repeating la ville, then you will have to use this ou pronom, and the sentence will go like that, je vous présente la ville, okay, so your first sentence doesn't change at all, ou, so you put your pronom here, and then je suis né, the rest continue, okay, like that, okay, and then let's have another, another situation when we want to replace Un complément de temps, okay, so it's not, it will, it won't be a place, but it will be something with the time, so, où, c'est l'année, okay, année it's year, c'est l'année, il a fait très froid cette année, okay, so you can see here, well, you've got the, this passé composé form, okay, faire froid when it's cold, okay, so it was cold, or cette année, and then, well, obviously, we don't want to repeat année, because it's here and it's here, okay? And in that case, well, you tend to use cette année just to indicate the time or when it was, okay? So, c'est l'année où il a fait très froid. All right, so, quite simple. First part doesn't change. Then you put your pronoun où, then the sentence continues like that. Il a fait très froid. All right. A few other examples for this time concept because normally obviously in many cases people tend to think that où it's only for a place so that's the reason why I thought it might be useful to give you a few examples just to to see uh, how to use it. So the first one for instance, c'est le jour, le jour de day, c'est le jour où elle est venue. Okay, venir is to come. C'est le jour où elle est venue. Second example. Ils arrivent le jour où tu seras absente. Okay, arriver to arrive. Sera, so remember, it's the verb être, to be. Okay, but it's the, f uh, the future form. Tu seras absente. Absente, you won't be here. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir, le moment, the time, où le bébé, the baby, va dormir, is going to sleep. C'est le moment où le bébé va dormir. Okay? So, I know it was long, but it was quite important. So, if you're not really sure about the use, don't be afraid to watch the video one more time. If you want more videos, then the YouTube channel is here, youtube.com slash imagier, and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day! Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, leçon 
N. And in this lesson, we'll work together on les structures avec deux pronoms, and especially when one of them, so one of the pronouns, when you, you will use to pronounce, and one of them will be en. Okay, so it was introduced in a previous uh, video lesson. Okay, so we'll work on this lesson, in this lesson, on the pronoun en. Okay, and then next lesson will be with le, la, le the lesson after lui leur and the last lesson regarding this topic with two pronouns will be with the pronoun i okay so let's see now with un so me or them m apostrophe te the apostrophe or then lui se or s apostrophe nous vous leur and se or s apostrophe will be placed before en. Okay, so that's the rule. En will come after me or m apostrophe, te or t apostrophe, lui, se or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur or se or s apostrophe. Okay, so that's the way it will go. So en is coming after. Okay, so we'll see a few examples, and then I thought it might be useful to put well the examples at the present form, so le présent, and then passé composé, because if you remember correctly, this uh, passé composé is uh, what we call a composed tense, and then the futur proche, so this near future structure that we've got, and uh, normally you you make it with the verb aller and then your verb at the infinitive and it's quite interesting because in that case well it gives you two verbs okay so the question is how do you put your pronouns when you get two verbs in your sentence okay so let's see now the present mon ami me donne un conseil all right so mon ami my friend me donne donne is to give un conseil and advice okay so let's say that we would like to replace un conseil in that case and then we saw in the previous lesson that un conseil could be replaced with en okay and so mon ami me so it should be before if you remember what we saw previously so me should be in the first position and then en should come right after and then the verb, all right? But then if you remember, we've got this uh here, so me, and then on is starting with the vowel as well, so uh should go away. That's the reason why you will have this m apostrophe, so m'en donne un, all right? Second example, ta femme t'achète une montre. Ta femme, your wife, achete is to, to buy une montre, a watch. Okay, and then of course we would like to replace une montre in that case. We will use this en pronoun. Okay, and you get ta femme. So you've got this te again, but then as it's with the vowel here, en, then e uh, needs to go away. T'en achète une. All right, so as we saw for the rule, first we've got te, after that en is coming, and then we've got the verb. Okay, then il nous apporte des fruits. Okay, so remember, apporter is to bring des fruits, fruits. Okay, in that case, we would like to replace des fruits, and so we will replace it with the pronoun en. Okay, il nous en apporte. All right, so nous first, then your pronoun en, then the verb. Okay, so let's see now with the passé composé. So same sentence, mon ami m'a donné un conseil, all right, mon ami m'en a donné un. So it will be exactly the same thing, especially if you think that a donné, the thing that you see here, okay, it's only one verb, okay, so you've got two parts because it's composed, all right, so first you've got avoir and then you've got this participe passé form, okay, but it's only one verb, all right, that's the reason why you put first your pronoun here, me, and then you put this second pronoun en before avoir, okay, because this is the verb here. So you get mon ami m'en a donné un. Let's see now the same sentence that we had previously, but at the passé composé form. Ta femme t'a acheté une montre, okay, so same thing here. Ta femme. So, te should be here, but then, of course, with the vowel, you, we take away the e. 
en a acheté une. Ta femme t'en a acheté une. All right. And then, ils nous ont apporté des fruits. All right. Same thing. Ils nous en ont apporté. All right. So, nous first, then en. And after that, you put your verb. So, same rule here. It's composed. So, you get two parts. But still, it's only one verb here. So, let's read it. Il nous en, okay, beautiful liaison here, <laughs> ont apporté, okay, so the full thing goes like, ils nous en ont apporté, all right, so let's read it one more time, mon ami m'en a donné un, ta femme t'en a acheté une, ils nous en ont apporté, all right, and then the last example we'll see with the future part, so in that case it will be quite interesting because we will have two verbs, okay, so let's see, mon ami va me donner un conseil, okay, so exactly the same idea, we'll replace un conseil by en, and then we see how it goes, mon ami va, all right, so here you've got this verb aller, all right, so the first verb here, And then you will put your pronouns. So, me here, of course, e is going away. Then you've got your pronoun en before the second verb. Okay, donner to give. That's the second verb here. Infinitive form, as usual in French, when we've got two verbs. So, mon ami va m'en donner un. All right. Ta femme va t'acheter une monstre. Exactly the same rule, ta femme va, so you've got first your verb here, then te, but then e is going away, en, and the second verb, acheter une. All right. Ils vont nous apporter des fruits, ils vont nous en apporter. Okay, so that's the only thing that you should remember, so when you've got one verb, whether it's simple or composed, then It is before the verb. When you've got two verbs like here, so with this first aller, then your verb, so donner here, remember that your pronouns will come before the second verb. Okay? But then the order will stay the same. All right? So I hope it was clear for you. Have a great day if you want more lesson and then the next or previous lessons can be found here youtube.com slash imagier or then the website www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 8, Leçon O. And in this lesson we'll discover together les structures avec deux pronoms. And uh, if we are more precise, uh, if you've got one of these two pronouns, if it is le, la, or les, okay? So, we saw in the previous video the same concept, so when you've got two pronouns in the same sentence, but then one of them is en, okay? So, if you want to check it, then it is the previous uh, video, and then after that we'll see lui, leur, and we'll finally we'll work with Y, okay? But then in that video, we'll work on le, la, ou les, okay? And then the rule is quite simple. If you've got first me, te, nous, vous, they will come first, and after that, you will put le, la, and les, okay? That's the rule. If you've got le, la, and then les, it will come all the time after me, te, nous, And vous. Okay, let's see that more precisely. And so we'll work on présent, passé composé, because it's a composed tense, so it's quite interesting to see how you put this pronounce when you've got a composed tense. And then the futur proche, so this near future, so I am going to, like in, in English, so aller plus infinitif, okay? It's interesting because in that case you've got two verbs, so we'll see how you put your pronouns when you've got the structure, the sentence, with two verbs, okay? So let's start now with the présent. So, mon père me conseille ce livre. Mon père, my father, conseillait to 
uh, advise or to recommend in that case ce livre, this book. So we want to replace ce livre, we will put le, okay, and as we saw for the rule, so mon père, first me, then le, and after that the word, uh, the verb, sorry, mon père me le conseil. Okay, that's it. Quite simple, remember, me first, then le, and then the verb. Second example, tes amis, your friends, donnez to give, les clés, the keys. Okay, tes amis nous donnent les clés. So, we want to replace les clés, so we should replace it with the plural form, so it's les, okay, here, les, and then remember, first nous, then les, and after that the verb. Tes amis nous les donnent. Okay, and the final example, je me réserve, okay, so réserver to reserve, la place de parking, so the parking place, la place de parking, in that case, we don't want to use la place de parking, we want to replace it with a pronoun, so je me la réserve, okay, remember, first me, then la, and after that your verb. Okay, so it's quite simple, it's not really difficult, remember, uh, in that case, me, nous, me, here in the first place, then le, la for the feminine, les for the plural, second place, then the verb. Let's see how it will go with the passé composé form, so passé composé, as you can see it in its name, it's a composed tense, okay, so you've got two parts, first you've got avoir, then you've got here, participe passé. Okay, so, mon père m'a conseillé ce livre. Same thing, we don't want to use ce livre again, so we put the pronoun. Okay, so in that case, if you look carefully, then mon père me first place, then you should have le here, because it's the masculine form, but then you've got here a vowel after, so e uh, needs to go away, so you get l apostrophe. Mon père me l'a conseillé. All right. Then, tes amis nous ont donné les clés. So, exactly the same sentence that we had previously at the present form, but in that case, it's the passé composé form, okay? Tes amis nous les ont donné. Okay? So, same rule, first nous, then les, before, and then after that you put the verb here. So, you can see that I've been putting in red the ending here, just to... Uh, remind you or uh, yeah, let you remember that we've got a rule in French normally when we make this passé composé form with avoir like that and if you've got what we call complément d'objet direct before you should put at the end of your participe passé form here feminine if the word is feminine so a s if the word is plural, okay, in that case we've got les clés, les clés is feminine plural, so that's the reason why we will add first feminine and then plural here, okay, so the good news is that you don't pronounce it, so donner, okay, so whether it would be without this final es or with es, you will pronounce it the same way, tes amis nous les ont donné, okay, and then the last one, je me suis réservé la place de parking, je me first, then la, and after that suis réservé. Okay, so it doesn't really change that much if you think, first me, or then nous, as we saw, then le, or then la and les, and after that you put your verb, even if in that case, it's a composed verb, it doesn't change anything, you just put it before, okay? So let's see now how it will work with futur proche, so structure with two verbs. So, same example, mon père va me conseiller ce livre, and now you can see something interesting, you can see that me and le will be placed before the second verb. Okay, so mon père va, so you put first your verb, me le conseiller. All right, so keep in mind that me and le should be before the second verb. Tes amis vont nous donner les clés. 
tes amis vont nous les donner. Je vais me réserver la place de parking. Je vais me la réserver. All right, so the rule goes like that. Me, nous, me. So as here, we saw first place, then le, la, les, second place. All right. And after that, your second verb. All right. I hope it was clear. Uh, if you want more lessons, then youtube.com slash imagier and then imagier.net if you want more material. Have a great day. Bye-bye.